Well, tonight we had an uh, interesting debate. I uh, had some good, good give and take, uh, sponsored by the NAACP and the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce. And uh, I think it's, it showed everybody, 125 people here tonight in the audience. Once again, for two years, I've been asking the question, does anybody believe advertising is more important than public safety? And once again, this room, a unanimous room tonight, 125 people, no one said advertising was more important than public safety. And I think it was interesting tonight between myself and Mayor Rhodes, there's a clear distinction. If you want to use the advertising money for public safety, I would be your candidate. If you want to continue to fund the chamber, uh, the 23 million they're getting, and going and asking for peanuts and scraps from the General Assembly out of the accommodations tax, well, that's the approach they have. I believe, I've been saying for two years, since September of 2015, we need 100 officers on the street. And we can put 100 officers on within the year if we pay them. If we become the best paid department in the state of South Carolina, we will have officers coming here. At the end of the day, there's someone who always wants to be a preacher, teacher, and a cop. And we can bring them here because some people aren't looking to get rich, but they do want to get paid. With $11.5 million from the chamber this year, we can put on 100 officers. We can give pay raises and improve their employment packages and we'll have more officers for Memorial Day. It's a really simple issue. Do you want it to be the way it's been or do you want to go in a different direction and put public safety first, what is the most important issue in this election? And I just got the best news we could have had. <laughs> the mayor just said if he had $11.5 million, he'd put 200 officers on the street. How are you going to hire 200 if you can't hire 100? If you have a restaurant, if you have a hotel, how do you run your, your dining room? How do you run your um, wait staff, your housekeepers, if you don't have enough employees? We didn't just wake up 60 officers short. The question was 75? No, it's a minimum of 100 officers. This summer we used 60 outside officers. That means that we were 60 officers short. Right now we're, we're still paying um, the chief, you know, the chief that retired back in May at a rate of $150,000 a year. He hasn't worked since May on the street and doing anything, and we're paying him a consulting fee. So what's he consulting? Is this his plan for the eight additional officers? Do y'all understand how simple to change the law is? The law was written to give your property tax rebate, to give the city capital improvements, there's a portion, but the lion's share goes to the chamber. There's 120 people in this room, and 120 people just said that public safety is more, than, more important than advertising. We've given the chamber $138 million for advertising, and none of it's gone to public safety. All you have to do is go back to Columbia, get the delegation to go up and change a couple lines in the state law to allow its use for public safety. It's called local legislation. There's only three counties in the state who can even have the A-tax. Ori County, Charleston County, in Beaufort County. The two south counties have never put it in place anywhere. And of the eight entities, the seven cities, and the county, we're the only one that has put in the legislation. So if the state changed something, the only person in the entire state of 183 cities and 46 counties, the only legislation they're changing is for us. And can you imagine the question going to the governor? and saying, Governor McMaster, will you please change the advertising so we can use it and pay for our own police officers? So people in Florence and Casey don't have to be coming down here and running our department for us because we can't staff it? Will you please change the law so that we can use that money for public safety? Time. Time. I don't know what kind of elaborate schemes behind the new library and the children's museum.
If you go back and look at budget 14, 15, and 16, you know, the mayor said it's, it's we, it's not I. So if it's we, that means all six members of council has participated in whatever this scheme is. They did not have any long range plans for a new library. There was no long range plans for a children's museum. So out of the blue, back in February, they have a press conference and announced to the world we're building a children's museum downtown and a new library. Now, from a political point, you know, if you stop and think, which are the two groups you don't beat up on? Which, are, which you never want to do anything with the seniors? And the children. And the children. And the children. So what better thing, hey, let's build those two downtown to cover up what's going on. And then you have property that was offered to the city in 2014 and they turned it down. But yet this spring, you know, three years later, the man who owns three parcels downtown walked away with over $500,000 in money he realized over what he paid for them in the past. You have properties that were sold for six and eight dollars a foot and the DRC went in and bought dilapidated buildings and paid sixty dollars a foot within 24 months. That's some pretty good investment going on downtown. Uh, we don't need the Children's Museum downtown. I say that we own the buildings now, go downtown and create innovative jobs and when you look down, you go down the bypass, what's one of the largest employers in, the, in, the, in our area? It's Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And no, Mr. Carey, we don't need a port. We don't need an interstate. We don't need any bigger of an airport. You need office space and you need web services. And we could go downtown and create incubators and have a whole revision of the downtown. A couple weeks ago, if y'all might have seen all that controversy when I made my presentation about the jobs. What they've done and what Mayor Riley successfully did over the last 15 years in Charleston. In Charleston, in 15 years, they've created an economic engine that employs 22,000 people. And they make double the state income. If we go after tech jobs, diversify. You know, I worked for John for eight years. You know, I enjoyed my time with John. <laughs> I thought we were going to 830. Have the rules changed? We have three questions. When the council had their debate, they were nine council member candidates and they had four questions. Are we shutting down this discussion tonight? You want an answer to that or you want to talk? No, I want an answer. Let me, let me do that straight in. First of all, are we all going to 830? I just tweeted it, it's no more. So you would have to come up and ask a question, not to change the rules and regulations here. I said 8.30, I'm comfortable with 8.30. Now, if we cannot have order in the house, I wish it now. You're gonna respect one another. That's what I believe in. We gotta respect one another. We cannot, it's not charge, but it's a serious business about the, the issues that are affecting this town, the city of Myrtle Beach, and we ought to be respectful to one another, but you agree or disagree. And I have the right to shut it down because I organize, and if you're not gonna be respectable, I mean, we'll go play out somewhere else. I agree. <laughs> but thank you. I guess we're going to get another 30 minutes to talk about the city's business. <laughs> this is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be having discussions. I have so much respect for Mr. Carey. I can't imagine the level and all of his expertise. You know, and, and hey, I went to Carolina because of John and got a hotel restaurant degree, so I have respect for John and Brenda. And please, y'all, in Brenda's absence, please pray for her and her daughter. That's hard and play for CD and his mom. But we need to sit here tonight and we need to go through these issues. And if they get a little testy and a little ugly, that's all right. We need to have a debate. Uh, domestic violence, that goes back to police. You know, we don't have enough police. Y'all realize when we brought in the 60 officers, that was a control of the boulevard. 
That wasn't put any officers, community officers. Nobody was in neighborhoods. There was no more officers at Market Common. They weren't in BTW. The officers weren't anywhere. Everybody was on the boulevard trying to keep the boulevard under control. You know, and, and then this year we're going to put eight more, so we're going to keep asking the state. The governor had to come down here and tell the city to get their stuff together. How embarrassing. But if we have those officers, we have 100 officers, everybody says, well, what are you going to do with them in the off season? Well, ladies and gentlemen, in January, they, or they answer as many calls as they used to answer in July. And you give a package, hey, you come to work for Myrtle Beach, we're going to pay the best of anybody in the state. You're going to see people moving here. Oh, we can't put 100 through the academy. We're, we don't want 100 rookies on the street. You pay officers, and officers will move here. You're always going to have preachers, teachers, and cops. There's a lot of people out there that they're not in it for the money. They're in it to serve. And officers are one of them. If we start paying, if we have the $11.5 million, we can raise the pay. We'll retain it. We won't become a revolving door in a training session for someone else. Then when we have those officers, then we can have a, a gang unit. And we can have a domestic violence unit. Then we can have a human trafficking unit. And we can do all kinds of things, but right now all we're doing is hanging on and hoping the boulevard doesn't go crazy and there's more shootings. What is your position on offshore drilling along our coast? And we'll go back to the... If y'all ask me a question, I'm going to give you an answer. And what I tell this group... It's the same group I'm going to go if I talk to a bunch of bikers, or if I go to the Dunes Club, or if I go to Market Common. It doesn't matter. You ask me a question, and you might not like the answer, but I'm going to be straight up forward. I don't run. I ain't scared. And uh, I don't support oil offshore drilling, but I support offshore drilling for natural gas. Clean natural gas. Natural gas, I believe, is the future. You know, it's not oil. There's not oil spills. So, you know. I'm 50-50, I'm, I'm, I'm supporting half of it. And the type of jobs and the industries and what um, natural gas and those type of jobs what it would bring, bring in here, you know, I, I think it's a benefit. Absolutely. Simple. The ad tax has three components, tourism development fee, the Brad tax, whatever y'all want to call it. Part of it's for the tax rebate, the rollback. Part of it goes to the city for capital improvements and the line share goes to the chamber. The mayor just sat here and said, we're not gonna do anything that would rest, risk our reputation, but we're allowing all the crimes and all the shootings and we're not using police officers. It all keeps coming back. If, if we accept what the mayor said that between 2009 and 2016, we went up 12 to 18 million in visitors, 50% increase. You know what the sad part of those numbers are on the backside? Between 2009 and 2016, we went from arresting 39,000 people to arresting only 24,000. So while we were going up 50% in visitors, we were going down 39% in arrests. And you wonder why we have our problems? And ladies and gentlemen, we need to take the ad tax money and put police officers on the street and protect the city's image, just like the image if we had an oil spill. Thank you. Y'all want 1.5 million, or y'all want 11 and a half million? Does anybody have an answer? Okay. What he's doing is saying, we're going to continue to fund the chamber. This year we're giving him $23 million for advertising. So in this pocket, the chamber's got all their money. They're holding it back. And they're going to the state and saying, hey, y'all go take money from everybody else. Get something else. Have everybody else continue to contribute to Myrtle Beach. When we have our own pocket here that we won't spend our own money. If we talk about the increase, you know, y'all as city residents have really been tattooed for the last couple of years on that 138 million. If you, if you think of the Grand Strand, and according to the chamber, it's the 60 miles. 
60 miles times three deep is 180 square miles. The city of Myrtle Beach makes up less than 18%. So that means 90% is going outside of that money. We're advertising 90% outside. Your tax dollars are going across the line into North Carolina to advertise for golf courses. We're going to North Myrtle Beach. We're going to Georgetown County and using your tax money to advertise and grow those cities. This year, from 2008 to 2009 to 16, North, we grew at um, 38%. North Myrtle Beach grew at 55%. Charleston grew at 88%. <coughs> They didn't spend a dollar. We spent $38 million to be in last place. It's absolutely ridiculous. All Luke Rankin has to do, or all Alan Clemens has to do, Greg Hembree, or anybody else in our delegation, is go to Columbia right now and pre-file legislation to change the use. It's simple. Then they come in in January, and the law gets changed. Talk to I get a lot of criticism that I can't get along with people, and I don't work well with people. I don't negotiate. Well, for two years, I've been offering the chamber 50% of that account, and I just showed you why we, we shouldn't be doing 50%. We ought to be getting 90% of that money coming back to the city and give the rest of the communities the 10% for advertising. Um, one, of, one of the biggest battles I had on city council Y'all drive down Oak Street, there's that big building on the left side beside the convention center. 18 times I voted, voted against the construction of the, the convention center hotel. That's 50 million of our 225 million in debt right there. And y'all, maybe some of y'all know, maybe you don't. There was a group that came, there was a man and woman that came from Coronado Beach out in San Diego, just first class, I mean, first class. They came, and they came to the city and they propose they want to go behind the convention center and build a cylinder, cylinder tower as a hotel. They were gonna pay for it. They didn't want anything. And then if that was successful, they were gonna build a second tower beside it. And that was gonna have some office space and it was gonna have living quarters. Um, they came and all they wanted was the hospitality fees that were created within the project. They wanted that to come back in. They weren't wanting anything else, no one else to pay. They were going to pay their way on the hotel. And what kind of a ridiculous agreement did the city end up doing? Making y'all own a convention center a hotel. And now, you know, how many years later, we still owe $58 million. And that's one of the biggest chunks of our debt. Well, answer, when you were mayor, the city was safe, clean, and business was thriving. What will you do to return to a safe, clean, business-friendly city if elected? I guess I'll just have the same leadership qualities I had for eight years. <laughs> Clean, safe. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it is what it is. We were safe. We didn't have problems. Y'all realize, and since Easter, we had six shootings at Easter. And in Father's Day, we had seven shootings in the Bubba video that went to 4.6 million people. <clears throat> then we got to the barricades all summer long. So if someone came to town and they weren't one of the 4.6 million that <clears throat> saw the video, you drove down and you had all these barricades to keep our visitors separated from each other. <clears throat> What's the first question you ask someone when there's barricades? What are the barricades for? It's because all of our, all our shootings. Then we get to Labor Day, and we have our first of two officer-involved shootings. We've never had an officer-involved shootings. In the last two months, we've had two arrests for human trafficking. The Caribbean, out at the mall, you know, some of those you know, questionable issues with the second and third row motels that everybody says we need to address, and I agree we need to address those. Uh, the sea banks, the other night I was down there in the middle of that, you know, after the shooting, I went down and I videotaped what was going on. The Sun News actually called me and asked me to use my videotape. So we had a shooting the other night. We have to get back to public safety, and it can be done. 
Anything, any story, any excuse is protection and simply funding the chamber's advertising. And if y'all walk out of here tonight, everyone in this room said public safety is more important. It's on y'all to go to our delegation. It's to go to Mayor Rhodes while he still sits in his seat. Mr. Chestnut, the rest of the council members, Brad Dean says, if you ask him, he'll fight for you. Ask him. Hey, we got to 830. Um, it's changed. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. I would ask that you go back and think about what's been discussed tonight. Uh, there are two candidates missing. If y'all watched the debate the other night, one of the candidates more often than not agreed with the mayor's point of view. And so I, I think there's, there's two different ways of looking at this. Do you want change or are you happy? Are you safer now than you were two years ago, four years ago, and eight years ago? When y'all leave right now, it's 8.30, it's not even 10, it's not 11. Y'all go down to the boulevard, park, and then go down behind the sky wheel and walk down the boardwalk by yourself. Don't look for a police officer. And then you answer for yourself. Are you safer now than you were? It's simple. Um, the news is out there, ladies and gentlemen. No matter how much, I can't imagine that we actually argue about neighborhood scout saying we're 17th. That's an improvement. We were 12th. In, you know, but wait until this number comes out after this year. We'll be in the top 10. But y'all realize Orlando, Las Vegas, Virginia Beach doesn't make the top list. Why are we arguing that we really aren't on that list? Why aren't we working to become one of the safest communities? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, I would be honored if, if you would give your trust to me and elect me again. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I've come back. There's things I want to see. And it really is. In 2015, I had a little rat card. And I said 100 officers. Pay raises and more for Memorial Day. That's what I'm saying again. It's about public safety. It's about creating new jobs, going in a different direction so we're not only service and about our family image. We've destroyed our family image. When you go down the boulevard, uh, before all the stuff started at Easter, someone rode from uh, Damon's up to about the pavilion area. On Friday night, before the Easter shootings, before all this started, and he called and said, Mark, I saw seven, not one, two, three, but seven individuals walking down the boulevard with a gun in their pants. He called nine times to the police department. They couldn't answer the calls. Y'all have been told a bunch of stories for a long time, and we need to make some changes. I hope God continues to bless the city of Myrtle Beach, and thank you. Let me again take this opportunity to extend my profound appreciations to you, the listening audience. Now, to give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Secondly, we've been blessed with having a, a, some candidates that took the heat, fought through it, and we want to extend an appreciation to each and every one of you guys for what you do. <laughs> To our elected officials that have quietly participated and actively engaged us in the past in the rear, Councilman Michael Chestnut, Councilman Jeff Cook, Council Chair Mark Lazarus. Thank you so very much. And to the outstanding young hey, Randall. Did somebody miss Randall? I didn't do it. Randall Wallace. Tyler and Mary. Thank you.
and with Mickey James firm and fair today. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> the NAACP and the Carolina African American Heritage Foundation want to just extend their profound appreciation to you for all that you do. And please, don't forget to do what's important. Go out and vote on Election Day. 